this is nice, isn't it? <laughs> Welcome to the EE e. BAFTA Film Awards 2024. <laughs> yeah. A great big bungie this is. You all look amazing in your tuxedos and your fancy dresses. It's like the opening scenes of Saltburn. <laughs> Let's hope it doesn't end up like the closing scenes in Saltburn. <laughs> what an array of stars. It is no exaggeration to say this room has in it the greatest actors in the world. Yes, <laughs> yes. And with that in mind, if the camera cuts to you guys, it might help think of it like a script. So it's interior, festival hall, night, having the time of your life, and Emily Blunt action. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. I'd like just 10% more though. Robert Downey Jr. action. <laughs> yeah. Come on, Andy Serkis, show them how it's done. <laughs> now, you may be needing... <laughs> you may be needing those acting skills, as judging these awards is like picking a favourite child. Difficult. Not impossible, but difficult. <laughs> so if you don't win, feel free to cry, but remember, your parents are watching and they never love you as much as your brother, who went off and got a proper job. And even I have no idea who's won, genuinely. It's one of those things I've only learned hosting tonight. There are only two people in the world who know who've won. I mean, let's hope one of them's the engraver. I always thought, like, the seat planner would know, and you, they'd put winners at the front or the end of an aisle. No, they've got hidden cameras. They can pick you up anywhere. So if you've got to scramble and climb over Kate Blanchett to get your hands on an award, that is what you do. <laughs> it's a metaphor for the acting industry generally. It's obviously been a tumultuous year for so many in the film industry with the writer strike and the actor strike. But I've been chatting to BAFTA and asking, is the future for screenwriters and actors looking rosy? And I can tell you, they say I. Although they, they do spell that AI, so I don't. <laughs> it's, just, it's a quirk. It is, of course, traditional at this point for the host to make these introductory remarks, but as we're all friends, I thought, let's give these extraordinary filmmakers what they want. So this monologue is over three and a half hours long. <laughs> but of course, when I say long, I mean epic. <laughs> <laughs> Tonight's list of nominated films, it's amazing though, isn't it? Poor things, poor things, ladies and gentlemen, yes. where a child's brain is put in an adult's body, and later this year, one of those may even be re-elected president. <laughs> Anatomy of a Fall was amazing. Yes. It has already scooped one prize, actually. Messi, the border collie in the film, won the Palm Dog Award at Cannes. <laughs> Bart Ruffalo's thinking, who's bummed you have to sniff to get one of those? <laughs> and what about the holdovers? <laughs> a film about a young man left behind at school over the Christmas holidays, hemmed in by snow and ice. Although where I grew up, we'd be out playing football in that. <laughs> I found the arts very quickly. <laughs> and Wonka was an absolute delight, wasn't it? A film all about chocolate. I think Wonka gave us all a boost. <laughs> and a Twix and a Crunchy and an Aero. Thank you very much. <laughs> you might need to explain that to some of our American friends. But it's, a, it's about the names of chocolate bars. Like Hershey's, but they taste nicer. <laughs> Oppenheimer was incredible. Telling the story of the construction of the world's most powerful bomb. That script, I know, went through a lot of rewrites. I believe in the first draft. Right at the last minute, Liam Neeson comes in and diffuses it. 
And Barbie was fantastic. Yes. I keep thinking about poor maligned Ken, so superbly brought to life by Ryan Gosling. It, yes. In the course of that film, Ken becomes a progressive, a champion of the marginalized, a voice for the oppressed. And if you squint at the end credits, you'll even see Ken's surname is actually Loach. <laughs> now, I've still got three hours and 27 minutes of monologue to go, but maybe let's, let's crack on with it, because even Bart Ruffalo's glazing over. Let's get this show on the road, shall we? It's been an amazing year in film. It has shocked us, delighted us, made us think, and made us want to go out and buy pink things. Let's have a look back. A truly great year for film. Right, let's give out some BAFTAs. First up is original screenplay. It is said there are only seven basic plots, but the writers of the films nominated in this category managed to find five more great ones. To present this award, we have an exceptionally gifted and versatile British talent. Using his voice, body and imagination, he has created some of the most memorable characters ever seen on screen. From Gollum in the Lord of the Rings series to Caesar in the Planets of the Apes franchise. And this is going to fry your minds because you've already seen him once before tonight. <laughs> it's the real Bark Ruffalo. It's Andy Serkis. <laughs> The award for special visual effects honours those who build spaceships, explode whole worlds, conjure up complete characters, and still get home in time to use 3D graphics to make beans on toast for dinner. To present it, two actors who can never be outshone by special effects. He is an actor who has had an extraordinary year, having starred in both The Colour Purple and Rustin, and she has appeared in a multitude of hits, from Tolkien to Mank, and is currently the star of the hugely successful Emily in Paris. Bien sûr, elle est marvelleuse et fantastique. C'est Lily Collins et Coleman Domingo. Our next award celebrates a, war, a world where imagination knows no bounds. It's for animated film. And to present it are two people who are as rugged and attractive as the Irish landscape from whence they came. When I saw them acting together in All of Us Strangers, I thought, oh, great, more unrealistic beauty standards for men. Please welcome <laughs> Paul Meskell and Andrew Scott. There's a lot of very exciting people in this room today. I'm very thrilled to be here. Kerry Mulligan, ladies and gentlemen. Hi, Kerry. You're going to introduce me to your posh friend? Hi, Bradley. Hi, David. Nice to meet you. Hi. Looking good. You too. Yeah. All right. Chill out, Bradley. Chill out. Sit down. It's all right. It's all right. Here's the ugly corner here. Hi, guys. Welcome. Now, one of the most memorable films from the year was Saltburn. What can I say about Saltburn? Not very much, because we're pre-watershed. Here's Rosamund. Hello, Rosamund. You were in it. Yeah, I'm not pre-watershed. No. Uh, well, what can we say about it? There were some people in a house. They were good at keeping clean. One does a dance at the end while his clothes are in the wash. <laughs> um, but the song he danced to was, of course... Murder on the Dance Floor. That's correct. By the wonderful... Sophie Ellis Baxter. Exactly. <laughs> And that very, that very song has become, that very song and that very scene have become a viral sensation. An incredible 22 years after the song was originally released. It shot back into the top 10 and the hashtag on TikTok, so young people tell me, <laughs> has had more than 200 million views. I know. So we couldn't pass up the opportunity to bring you a very special performance. Please welcome, singing Murder on the Dance Floor, it's the brilliant Sophie Ellis Bexter! <laughs> right, back to the awards. BAFTA's mission is to inspire, support, and celebrate emerging talent. And the next category, outstanding debut by a British writer, director, or producer, awarded in honor of Carl Foreman, does just that. Each year, BAFTA supports thousands of people to realise their potential through bursaries, scholarships and career development programmes, including 
last year's outstanding debut winner, former BAFTA scholar Charlotte Wells. To present this category tonight, we have invited a plucky young talent from the world of sport. It's early days, but we're all watching him. He shows a lot of promise. Please welcome star of the docu-series Beckham. It's David Beckham. <laughs> Another BAFTA you cry. Well, we don't mind if we do. To present the award for adapted screenplay, two true originals. The star of Argyle, Bryce Dallas Howard, and joining her, the man who played the title character in Bob Marley, One Love, Kingsley Benadia. <laughs> time for... Time for supporting actress. And to present it, we have a past BAFTA winner. He is the writer, star, and director of the upcoming film, Rob Peace. Please welcome the ridiculously talented Chiwetel Ejiofor. <laughs> now listen, these ceremonies can sometimes take a while to get through. So in a break from tradition, we thought what better way to keep you energized than by bringing on a world-class motivational speaker. <laughs> you may recognize him as Nate from Ted Lasso, but before then he was more widely known as his old school alter ego from Leeds. Everybody, please give it up for Mr. Swallow. We now come to an award given in honor of Michael Balkan, the outstanding British contribution to cinema. He recognizes people and organizations that have made enormous contributions to our cinematic world. Past winners include Andy Serkis, the Harry Potter film series, Tessa Ross, and Derek Jarman. To present this year's award, we're very honored to be in the presence of a star from Bridgerton and the Red King. It's the amazing Adjua Ando. Over the last year, we've sadly lost many friends and colleagues from the film industry. We'd now like to take a moment to pay tribute to them. Here, with a special arrangement by Joe Stilgo, performing time after time, please welcome the incomparable Hannah Waddingham. <laughs> we also remember executive and producer Eileen Maisel, who we sadly lost on Friday. They will all be missed. Our next award is for Outstanding British Film and is given each year in honour of Alexander Corda. This year's nominees are a shining example of the diversity and strength of British cinema. Ten wildly different films, yet they do have one thing in common, they're all the best of British. To present it, she is a global pop star, a fashion icon, winner of six Brit Awards and three Grammys. I cannot believe I'm about to say these words, but I am. What a fabulous chance to make my children jealous. Please welcome the one and only Dua Lipa. <laughs> it's time to celebrate the big boss on set, the gaffer, the visionary. I am, of course, talking about directors. And this BAFTA is awarded in honor of David Lean. To present it, Someone we had to smuggle into the Royal Festival Hall in a security van, because quite frankly, he is that much of a national treasure. We have loved him for, would you believe, 30 years since four weddings and a funeral. You adored him in Bridget Jones' diary. He's been brilliant this year in Wonka. Please welcome Hugh Grant. <laughs> we now have the BAFTA Fellowship, which recognizes a truly enormous contribution to the film industry. Some of the greats who've already been honored with this include Alfred Hitchcock, Helen Mirren, Ang Lee, and Ridley Scott. To present this year's award, please welcome a titan of British film. He's the producer of Gravity, Marriage Story, and Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Plus, he's behind a tiny little franchise called Harry Potter. And in the past 12 months alone, he's produced Barbie and Wonka. Not a bad year, really, for David Heyman. <laughs> What's that, I hear you cry, you? The British public would like to give out an award voted for by you, the British public. All right, British public, calm down, we'll do it now. I am thrilled to announce it's time for the EE e. Rising Star Award, which is given in honour of casting director Mary Selway. The purpose of this award is to shine a light on new talent, fresh talent, emerging talent, usually intimidatingly, annoyingly young talent. <laughs> It's the only award voted for by the public. Previous recipients include James McAvoy, Michael Ward and Lashana Lynch. So strong work, British public. To present it, two more winners of this award. Please welcome from the upcoming Hot Milk, Emma Mackey, and from Back to Black, Jack O'Connell. <laughs> Three awards to go, people. We're moving into the final act. First up, we have leading actor. 
to present it, someone who has won four BAFTA awards in her career, and it will surprise nobody if she wins four more. She's producing and starring in the soon-to-be-released The New Boy. Please welcome last year's winner for leading actress, Kate Blanchett. Kate Blanchett! <laughs> After leading actor, it makes a certain logical sense to award leading actress to present it. The star of Hijack, and also the dream in which he becomes my best friend. It's Idris Elba! <laughs> OK, it's time for best film. All five films deserve to win, but as has been repeatedly explained to me, there can only be one winner. To present it, we have a true legend of cinema. He was the film star of the 1980s. His charitable foundation has raised over $2 billion. He was Marty McFly in Back to the Future. Michael J. Fox! <laughs> Well, that's it for the EE e. BAFTA Film Awards 2024. We've wrapped this year's story, but left enough plot strands open for a possible sequel in 2025. <laughs> Everyone at home, thank you for watching and supporting film, because without an audience, making movies would be a lot less fun. Some people have won tonight, some have not, but whatever the outcome, it's been a pleasure to gather together and celebrate cinema in all its forms. Now, as a wise person once said, Come on, Barbie, let's go party! Yeah.